<laughs> and it's a true story. Um, yeah, you know, I, I lived this life with my little sister, Tiffany, playing me, and I'm playing my older sister mm -hmm. in the film. And um, this was a chapter in our lives, and we lived in Las Vegas together and for about two years. And afterwards, I left Las Vegas she left Las Vegas, she went to the East Coast, I went to mm -hmm. LA, and we never talked about this moment in our lives again, closed that door. Um, but I always thought in the back of my mind that it might make a good movie, mm -hmm. and I moved to Los Angeles to make movies and be in movies. Mm -hmm. So I started writing it, and I wrote about 15 pages and kind of put it in a drawer, and did not look at it again, made a lot of other films, did a lot of other content, and circled back around to it. Um, but I knew I couldn't make the movie until I found my star, which I did, Ooh. and Tiffany. Woo! Yeah. 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 Once I committed to moving forward with the film, this is after you know a good almost 15 years and a good 10 years of you know working in the industry on other projects, um, in all, <laughs> in front and behind the camera in different capacities. Um, but I really felt ready to make my first feature, and I felt this would be the perfect one, so. And what was it about Tiffany that you saw that the other actresses perhaps didn't have? Well, I didn't look at any other actresses, oh, first yeah. of all. <laughs> um, you know, in my mind, I was just, you know, it's like what you're seeking is seeking you at the same time in almost anything, you know, that you're trying to do, especially creatively, and I was just thinking and wishing <laughs> for someone. I didn't hold any formal castings. I was just kind of, uh, like I always am, I'm always kind of looking at everybody and thinking about, oh, are you an actor? Even if you're not, you know, I'm always kind of informally scouting. I watch a lot of um, films and go to theater. And so I was watching a series of short films and Tiffany was in one and uh, called Roboto. And she barely had any lines in this film, but it didn't matter at all because her presence uh, was so distinct and um, there was such a softness and a sensuality to her in this role that I just felt like she could be the one, you know? <laughs> and uh, I'll let her speak on it some more of how, you know, like I was seeking her and she was kind of seeking me at the same time. Um, but I knew from that film that, that she was the one. I just didn't know when and how I would meet her and how that would come together, but I just kind of trusted that, that it would happen and it did. Exactly, and I'll speak on that now. But um, yeah, I've been a huge fan of Numa for a very long time, someone actually, when I was back in Chicago, they told me, you need to know about Black and Sexy TV. Yeah. She yeah. was the founder of that. This is her, you know her, she birthed that. And I just, I, I was a fan of the series, and the film I was in, Roboto, I saw that she was moderating. Um, she was gonna be uh, uh, moderating the event the next day, and I saw that that night she was hosting an <laughs> event with other filmmakers where she was a part of, so I was like, why not just show up and introduce myself to her? I'm a fan of hers. So yeah, I showed up and I was just so in awe with her presence amongst other filmmakers there. But she shared something that really struck me and man, it just like moved me and gave me the confidence to share my truth. She shared that she was adopted. And um, at the time, I never shared that out loud. And uh, she shared that in front of everyone. It was like, yeah, I like that. She's so brazen with it and I just, I spoke up during the Q&A and I told her how she made me felt. And then afterward, uh, we reconnected and I told her about the film and how I was, uh, why I came to the, the, the screening. And she told me, wait, you're that girl in the movie? I, I, I think I have a role for you. <laughs> and that was literally two years before we even shot Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like two years later, she um, hit the DMs or the <laughs> I don't know. Something. No. And we, yeah, we just set up literally a lunch date and the movie wasn't even done yet. It was literally 15 pages. And I was scared. I didn't even know what she was gonna have me doing in the movie, but I said yes without even knowing. And the fact that it's a true story and it's her life story, it just made me want to yeah. honor her story even more. And I felt like I had to do it. Yeah. I had to face that too. Yeah. So I'm curious because
this is your first feature film? Yes, okay. feature film debut. All right. <laughs> Uh, because this is not your usual typical feature film debut, <laughs> to say the least, right? So it always makes me curious. You had any second thoughts or, hmm, I don't know if I want to go there or I don't know if I'm right for this. Any of that happened? Or you just went full tilt and said, and I'm committed, I'm committed. I wish that was the case, that I was committed, but yeah, I definitely had trepidation going into it a little bit. Um, but like I said, because it was a true story and... It was so different for me, my walk of life. I wanted to honor the women, but I wanted to honor Nina. Mm -hmm. And just for her to be so brave enough to like really put herself out there and share that part of her, even the name Jezebel is radical itself. For me, that was the most scary part for me to like, be able to tell my family who's here. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jezebel, their eyebrows literally raise, and it's a lot of different, um, it's polarizing uh, feedback, but I was definitely scared uh, many times, but Numa was right on, there on set with me, so she made sure I was safe, I was okay, we had a lot of moments where her and a producer and I, we connected, and they, they took care of me. What did you find out about yourself during this picture that you didn't realize before? How afraid of my, my body I was, how I used to hide different parts of myself. Like, for example, I actually, being in a bikini, that was, that didn't happen until this movie. It was like four years prior, like maybe even more than four years since I've been in a bikini. So just really embracing my body and my curves. And sometimes when I sit down and may, my stomach may be a certain way and embracing all of that, it, that was like the biggest thing I learned about myself to really love all of me, even my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get teased for it and just really love it now and I'm covering it up right now but you're yeah. <laughs> so I just really overcame just the, the fear of like my body and like even like I remember growing up there was these guys always just barking up my sister's here too so she can probably attest to this and other women but like these guys on the street just barking at women and because of that especially at a young age I just wanted to cover up my body and conceal myself and yeah I really felt like as Jezebel Tiffany was having her sexual awakening I was too as well yeah which is one of the things I really like about this picture because if you just read the premise you think that, okay, it's going to be this doom and gloom, oh, I went down. And it goes a completely different path. And I wanted to ask Numa, did you, what kind of obstacles did you have making this picture? Because I'm sure, of course, you got to raise money. And you got to go out and people say, well, this is not a, this is, we don't see in a black film like this. This is not a kind of movie. Why don't you do just some, some rom-com? <laughs> that's cute, that's cute. <laughs> I like rom-coms. I've actually created um, in that space as well. But um, the funding for the movie Full Circle came from my sister, who I'm playing in the movie. Uh, the first round of funding, we were through like three rounds of funding. So um, my sister and I, again, you know, we had never talked about the time in Las Vegas. I left, she left. She didn't even know I had wrote the 15 pages or that I was dreaming about one day how I might, you know, um, go back and, and look at this uh, for a film. But we were talking on the phone one day, and again, it was kind of like the what you're seeking is seeking you. In my mind, I was hearing this voice, make your film, make your film, make your film. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I could feel myself inching towards it. And my sister and I were on the phone one day, and she, she just, out of the blue, said, you know, I want to um, invest in your company, <laughs> Black and Sexy TV at the time. I want to I give you money for your company. I was like, how much money? And the number that she said was not really enough money to really invest in the company. But I said, you know, for that amount of money, I could make this film that I want to make. And I'd really like to revisit that time when we lived in Las Vegas together. And immediately she said, yes, yes, let's do that, let's do that. And I was like, are you sure? And I said, I also wanna play you in the film. <laughs> and she just said yes readily, and she um, put all of her trust and her money where her mouth is 
in me, you know, uh, to move forward on it. So I sent her a budget. You know, she doesn't know anything about filmmaking, you know. I sent her a budget, and she kind of gave me the money piece, and you know, like, she didn't understand. I'm like, no, I need the money now. Like, we got to go. So it was crazy because, you know, I took my whole crew out to Las Vegas, and I was running to the Western Union. But she was sending me money, you know, like every third day, you know, to get it done. It was wild. Um, but that's how the first round of funding came. So I never had to, you know, concern myself with um, going to to anyone else until we got the movie in the can, and then I did a crowdfunding. But I had done a series of crowdfunding prior for my company at the time, and um, the fan base there, knowing that I had made a first feature, was a, a big incentive for them to give money. And so the second round of funding was the crowd was through GoFundMe, and the third round, the final bit of money came after the film got into South by Southwest, which is a big incentive for certain investors as well. And then I was able to get on the phone and call a few people that I know that that could give bigger chunks of money. And I just got on the phone and said, "Hey, we got into South by. Uh, we need finishing funds for sound, this, whatever." And that's how I raised the final. So it was a more private appro approach, which is how I've, um, in a one-on-one -on -one approach, than trying to go to companies. So I did do some of those pitching things. I did that through Tribeca. I got like a slew of no's, and then a handful of very interested, but then no. <laughs> um, so I did a little bit of both, but I was most successful in going directly to the fan base uh, that had uh, built over the years and my sister, <laughs> and, uh, and then finally, you know, a few whales I know at the end. Uh, let's open it up to the audience. Uh, we have a microphone. Oh, you got one already. Uh -huh. uh, you ready? <laughs> yeah, I typically do help him with this, but anyway. Um, I got you know, uh, one of the things I can say about the film I can appreciate is um, the 360 humanity. It was totally a gut punch. I totally didn't expect what I saw, you know, in that film. You totally humanized that, and it, it just wasn't about sex. I didn't pay attention to that is what I'm saying. So I could, you know, I, I just really think that was that was great how you did that. But Tiffany, what I really want to know is, um, what was your most vulnerable moment emotionally as that character? That's what I'm interested in. Could you tell so you? many. Um, <laughs> I think the most vulnerable moment for me was the scene when uh, I was in his office um, the, the very first day and I was asked to take my clothes off. That was vulnerable because it reminded me of a slave trade and I couldn't oh. shake that <laughs> for a while. And, um, and really not going too far into that darkness of it, but finding the enjoyment of it. And we actually shot that one. We didn't shoot a lot of scenes a lot of times, but we spent some time on that one because it was just a certain tone that we wanted to explore. We didn't want to go to, oh, da downtrodden, even though that's what I was feeling. We wanted to see what else, to find the nuance of it. So, but that was definitely, at first, it was like, whew, it's hard for me. Even when I watch it, I'm just like, as an audience member, I just still get like struck by that. Great job being that brave, by the way. Thank you. Uh, who's next? Um, I just wanted to say congratulations. Um, I've been following Black and Sexy since I was in high school. Um, hey, hey, naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Um, but I also just wanted to acknowledge that both of you have such a beautiful presence up there. Um, and I feel like I saw that in the film. Like, you guys are both just filled with so much life. And Numa, I just wanted to ask you, what was your experience like being doing everything on this project and then still having to bring yourself as a character to it? It was a very satisfying feeling. It was, I got to engage everything that I love to do. Um, you know, I got to engage being this very fascinating <laughs> character, my sister who was always a bit of an enigma to me. Um, I, you know, was able to get to know her in a way that I don't think I, we would have 
you know, got to know each other otherwise because I had to learn her as a character to enter. Um, and I got to be on the other side of the camera just, you know, directing and, you know, moving everything around and, and dealing with wardrobe and dealing with production design. And I loved doing everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, my daughter was on set, you know, my daughter's in the film. Um, you know, but, you know, we had our team with us, so I had a lot of really great support, and I handpicked every person that was uh, in Las Vegas with us filming this, so, but it was, it was, it was great, it was, I mean, I was on cloud nine every night, I was very high off of this, um, you know, for a long time after filming, and then I had to kind of engage the next wave of enthusiasm to get through post-production. But the actual, you know, getting in there and filming it was, I love it so much. I love all aspects of filmmaking. So um, it was very satisfying. Okay, who's next? Uh, Numa, I think your voice is mesmerizing, first of all, I have to say yeah. that. And um, Tiffany, I loved the naivete that you um, get, came through. I, just imagining a young girl being put in that position. But what I want to comment on is uh, you playing your sister. Because I didn't know if I liked her at first. Like, I, I thought, was she like a user? Or was she being? But the way you played her, and as the story panned out, I realized that she really, in my judgment, thought she was helping. She really was helping the way that she knew how to help. And my I had to take away my judgment about, you know, what sister would do that or whatever. And it was just at the end when she says, hey, do you need to move back in? Like she was really, in my judgment, saying like, I'm rooting for you, I'm on your side, this ain't that. It ain't what, you know, I'm not, you know. So I really love that you showed that and, and made that character for me a full, um, full person who I could see that she had to make tough choices. She was obviously the oldest one, in, you know, of the siblings. Had to make tough choices and it was a, message for me not to judge her for it. So thank you for that. It was well written and well acted by everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't really have to yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>